hundreds. Back in the days of Emperor Napoleon I, battle tactics back when muskets were still smooth bore, firing round lead balls that were very inaccurate and tumbled when they flew. Battle tactics were still in use in 1863 that required foot soldiers to stand in neat lines shoulder to shoulder and only less than 100 yards apart so that with those old smooth bore inaccurate short range weapons that seems to be hovering magically over that Confederate artillery piece. Yeah, 
is, I don't know what that UFO, dare I call it that, I don't know what it is, but I sure hope it's one of ours. Our well-trained soldier, north or south, could fire three aimed shots with deadly accuracy per minute. The deadly combination of new weaponry and old battle tactics largely accounts for the almost unbelievable losses in the American Civil War on both sides. More soldiers were killed north and south in the American Civil War than just about every other American war before and since combined. That's from Bunker Hill all the way to Afghanistan. That Confederate cannon up on the rise near their camp seems to be out of commission. We should be very grateful for that. Cannon, back in those days, fired much more than cannonballs, or what they called solid shot. Solid shot was usually used against fortifications, especially stone and brick. They could be cannonballs, they could be and were used with great effectiveness against masses of infantry. But perhaps the deadliest kind of artillery was the kind that fired at close range against infantry formations like the ones we're watching. What was called canister. Canister was basically an overgrown tin coffee can packed with musket balls packed together in sawdust to help them spread out when the cannon was fired, acting like a giant shotgun. You might notice near that Virginia regimental banner, near the center of the rebel camp, there appears to be an ammunition wagon right next to that flag. 
if you're familiar at all with 1863 battle tactics, you know that where there's an ammunition wagon like that, there probably is an artillery piece not too far away. Yet the one disabled up on the hill with the rammer apparently still down the battle does not all oh my look at what's under that tarpaulin. amongst us, you might be thinking, but how could the rebels have a Gatling gun? Mr. Gatling himself was from Indianapolis, Indiana, and what few Gatling guns did see action during the Civil War, they were manufactured in Indianapolis and Cincinnati. I can't believe you guys are laughing at this. <laughs> ever have gotten one of those guns? Well, that's so simple. Anybody's they got it the way be. they managed to get many oh, of like other supplies. When Union forces were in their area, they simply captured their supply wagons. In fact, 